Hi, most projects nowadays have unit tests to check if their code works as expected or not. But actually, can we somehow check that tests themselves are good or bad? If someone introduces a bug to our program, will these tests catch it before we release to production? Usually, tests themselves are only evaluated during a code review process when other programmers take a look at your code and try to find flaws in it. And the only metric that is gathered regarding unit tests is a test coverage, the percentage of lines that is covered by unit tests. Usually projects demand that this metric is at least 75 or 80 percent, but that doesn't say anything about the quality of the tests. Actually, there are tools that can be used to evaluate unit tests. They are called mutation testing frameworks. In Java, the most popular one is called PyTest, and we will see it in action today. In general, the process of mutation testing is the following. First, we have to create a so-called mutant program by introducing a bug to our original code. We can do it by replacing the plus sign with a minus, multiplication by the division, or by simply removing a void method call. Then we run our unit tests, and we expect at least one of the tests to fail. If so, our tests are good enough to catch a bug, and the mutant program is killed. But if not, it means that our tests should be improved. You can perform mutation tests manually by changing the program and running unit tests. But why would you do that if there are automated tools? PyTest, for example, manipulates the bytecode on runtime using the ASM library. It doesn't save uh, the changed code to the disk, so you shouldn't be afraid that a bug will be deployed to production. Let's see the PyTest library in action. Let's say we have a block application and a service with a single method calculate rating that, well, calculates a rating for a given post. It accepts a number of likes and dislikes for this post, and for now it just subtracts dislikes from likes. Then we have a single test for this service. We call calculate rating with uh, three likes and zero dislikes. And we assert that the rating of this post is three. Now let's see what should we do to run the PyTest. First, we have to add the PyTest Gradle plugin. Here it has the latest version of 1.9.0. Then we have to configure this plugin. We enable GUnit 5 integration, specify the target classes, specify four threads to run the tests faster, and also a very important property with history. It allows subsequent runs to run faster because they will read the info from previous runs. And also we specify output formats to XML and HTML. Now let's run the PyTest. It will take a few seconds to run. To view the report, let's open build, reports, index HTML. And we can view this file in a built-in idea viewer. Here we can see that the line coverage is 100%, so the Jacoco would tell us that everything is great. But the mutation coverage is only 50%. One of two mutants survived our tests. Let's see which mutants were created. As we can see, the first mutant that was killed just replaced our return clause with a simple return zero. And our test case spotted this problem because we expected the result to be 3. But another mutant replaced integer subtraction with addition. And we didn't fail our test because 3 minus 0 is the same thing as 3 plus 0. Let's see how we can improve the test to spot this problem. We can simply replace the number of likes with 5 and dislikes with 2, and the expected result will stay the same. But when the PyTest replaces subtraction with addition, the test will fail, because it expects 3 and gets 7. 
and we can see in the report that mutation coverage is 100%. Now let's make our service more complex. Let's introduce the concept of minimal rating. If the rating of the post is less than minus 10, we don't want to return the rating itself, we would like to return integer.minValue, which will indicate that this post is really bad and we don't want to show it to anyone. So we extract our rating to a variable, compare it to the minimal rating, and if it's less, we return the integer dot mean value. Let's add a test for this use case. We will call the method with one like and 12 dislikes, and we verify that the result is integer mean value. Let's run the PyTest and see the report. While it runs, I would kindly ask you to like this video and subscribe to see more. And in the report, we can see that one of the mutants survived. The report tells us which exactly mutant it is, and it was created by changing the conditional boundary. In our case, the sign less than was replaced by less than or equals, and our test didn't cover this case. Let's fix it by introducing a new test. It will call the same method with one like and 11 dislikes, and we assert that we get the expected value minus 10. So when the PyTest changes the condition to less than or equals, this test will fail. Let's check it. As we can see in this report, all the mutants were killed. Okay. Now let's make the final change to our service. Let's say we would like to call some REST service and delete the post if it has the low rating. For that we should call the REST service dot delete post. If we run just the unit test now, they will pass. But let's see what the PI test will tell us. As we can see, one of the mutants survived. As one of the mutators, PyTest just removes the calls for the void methods from your code. And let's see how we can fix it using the Makita library. Here we have to call the Makita verify method to assert that the delete post was called. For this approach to work, the REST service should be the mock as it is in our case. And let's also check that the delete post was called only once and it was the only method that was called. Let's run the PyTest again and see the result. As we can see, all the mutants that were created by the PyTests were killed by our unit tests. OK. If we would like to run more mutators to produce more mutants, we can go to the build cradle and, using the property mutators, specify that the PyTest should run all of them. By default, some mutators are skipped. In the report, we can see that 5 more mutations were created, 11 instead of 6, but all of them were covered by our test. On the bottom of the report, you can see the list of all active mutators. If you would like to enable even more mutators, or even have a Spring integration, you have to enable the PyTest plugins. But unfortunately, some of them are not open source and you have to pay for them. As we have seen, mutation testing frameworks can boost your confidence in your unit tests and even prevent some bugs. But unfortunately, this technology has some major drawbacks. First, it's very time consuming. If you try to run mutation tests on a huge production ready project, it will take a really long time to complete. And second, it's very hard to develop your own mutators. As I mentioned before, PyTest uses ASM to manipulate bytecode, and this library is very difficult to develop with. 
but still I think it's a great technology. You can speed up your test by reducing the number of classes that you're testing. For example, run the mutation tests only against your service layer where all the important computations are done and ignore the repositories and controllers. I hope it was useful and interesting for you. Thanks you for watching and see you next time.